Yo, Elliot, how did you make the decision to move to rural Florida? In other words, is there a process of thoughts, considerations that you would share based on your experience? For context, I'm looking to make a big move within the next 12 to 18 months to escape the communistic hell that is New York City. And I'd like to lead my wife down this path as confidently as I possibly can. I'd also like to add that her family and mine are not supportive at all. They say things to put pressure on her, knowing how open her heart is. But that is a topic for another conversation. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Brian, my decision to move to Florida from New York over now 17 years ago was because my parents were going there, right? A little, a little different than your situation where my parents are super supportive and my parents, my dad had, he had, he he was fed up with New York city too. But like I said, it was like 20 years ago and he was like, I'm moving down to Florida. And the reason why we, he moved to Florida is because the weather is like it is in Belize. And he, you know, instead of going back to Belize and living in a third world country, he was like, I will live in Florida, which is like Belize, but America. And he's right because we're literally right across the Gulf from Belize. So it's basically like on the same, what do you call that? Meridian. So um, I, we just moved down here because I wanted to be closer to family, family, family. Family's everything to me, man. Family's super important. Family's very important. I know this world hates the family, denigrates the family, and says all these things about how you need to get away from your family. But I wanted to be close to my family, especially since I knew I was starting a family and I wanted my kids to be around their grandparents. So that was our decision to move to Florida. Now, uh, four months ago, when we decided to move from the coast inland to Lake County, Florida, <clears throat> that was something that had been boiling up. That had, that had been on its way for a very long time. Even before moving to Florida, I had always wanted to live on farmland. When I was like 21, 22 years old, <clears throat> and I was just getting into the fitness industry, I was starting to learn a lot about natural health and natural lifestyles, and I started buying food from the Amish. They would they had like a like a co-op where they would come from Pennsylvania and they would bring their food to Long Island. And I would just see the way these guys had like dirt under their fingernails and like they were just riding like these trucks and like the whole Amish lifestyle to me, I was like in awe of. I was like, wow, these people live off the land and they live very naturally. And in fact, I wanted to go live in Pennsylvania. I wanted to go live in Dutch County, Pennsylvania. Um, what do they call it? Lancaster. <laughs> I legit wanted to go live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Maybe like become Amish or something. And uh, <clears throat> it didn't turn out that way. I'm sure my wife would have followed me back then. <laughs> back then, not now. <laughs> back then, she would have. She totally would have went went along with me, and we would have been Amish. But instead, I moved to Florida. And then when 2020 rolled about, and there was nothing. Listen, once the schools closed, two things happened that made it very evident for, at least for Colleen, because me, I would have moved in a long time ago. But, you know, she's my wife, she, so, you know, uh, and we got the kids, and so, you know, I can't just jump up and do whatever I want all the time. I gotta take them into consideration. <clears throat> and, uh, but I always get what I want anyway, it just, as long as I don't force it. If I try to force it, I just make a mess. If I just state what I want and wait for it to happen, it usually happens. And that's what happened. COVID happened. And I'll tell you, man, 2020 was my best year ever. 2020 was the best year ever. Started homeschooling. I always wanted to homeschool. My wife didn't want to homeschool, right? And we argued about it for a long time. We don't really argue. But, like, I pushed it, and she was like, no, I can't. And and I understand because she always had a baby in the belly and one on the tit. And it's like, what am I going to do? I'm going to teach these kids? Well, I'm so I understood. But then 2020 happened, and the kids got out of school, right? And at that point, they were basically homeschooling. And I was like, hey, look, we're homeschooling. And she's like, yeah, it's not that bad. And the kids liked it. And then when the schools opened back up, they were like, oh, yeah, your kids need to wear masks, and they're going to be like plastic around the kids when they get to the classroom. And I was paying for fucking private school. And the school, the I don't know if it was the people that go to the school or the school administrators, but they were so covid paranoid that I was like these people are sick I don't want my children to be around them not sick like COVID sick mentally fucking sick people were that paranoid about a 99.998 survival uh, virus quote unquote virus are stupid you're you have mental problems if that scares you and the whole school was like up in arms like people are gonna fucking die so I was like, no, I ain't sending them back there. I damn sure ain't paying for that garbage, right? I ain't gonna pay for that garbage. 
that happened and then 2020 you know what i really believe about 2020 it's funny because they call it 2020 2020 vision what is 2020 vision when you have 2020 vision you see clearly you start to see shit that you couldn't see before if you had uh 2019 vision you don't see as clear 2019 you can't see as clear it's like whoa okay i can see but i don't see it all 2020 vision boom it all locks in 2020 started to show particularly colleen it started to show her the people, the way the people were in her life, her so-called friends. She started to see like, oh man, that's what you think, right? It brought out all the truth. And she started to see that the people, her quote unquote friends, which like she was saying that like part of the reason why she won't leave because she likes her friends. She started to see her friends in a different way because, she, because they were all what? COVID scared, COVID scared, COVID scared, paranoid. People who are paranoid about COVID are under a demonic spell. These are people who are sick in their head. They're sick in their brains. They love authority. They, they love totalitarianism. It was kind of crazy to me too, is that they're, for the most part, a lot of them are left-leaning people. And I remember being like a lefty in my 20s. I remember being a liberal. I was liberal in my 20s. And the whole thing about me being a liberal was that it was anti-establishment, right? The whole liberal idea was laissez-faire, right? Laissez-faire government, leave us alone government. Liberal means leave me alone, right? But that's not really what it means in America. And it's damn sure it doesn't mean it now, especially past 2020. It means a totalitarian. Liberals want totalitarianism. They want to tell you what to do and they want to force you to do it at the barrel of the government's hand. That's the craziest thing with these forced vaccines. Anyway, that's not the point of this rant. The point of this rant is we started to see how all our all her friends were psychotic liberals. And so, you know, she had no more connection to them. And so with the kids' school being paranoid and all her friends being paranoid, uh, and at the same time, this property showed up, for us it was like a no-brainer. It was like, oh, shit, this is, this is it. This is the time, right? This is the time. We got to go do it. And so we're here. And that, re that was really my thought process. It wasn't a thought process. It was a vision that I had for a very long time. And then circumstances unfolded in order to allow it to happen. And this is why I tell you guys all the time, man. And I know, you know, I sound crazy when I say it sometimes. I even had an interview with a kid the other day and like, you know, for his podcast. And he just was not getting it. He was like, I think you lost your mind. Um, when I tell you. Hold your vision in your mind and be grateful for it as if it's here and do not force it, allow it to come to you. This is how my life has been and <clears throat> this is how I ended up where I am right now in rural Florida, in, 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 in Lake County. But I didn't make that up this time. I, in retrospect, I've looked at my life, I look back and I'm like, wow, all, this is how it has been in my life. Again, I'm fortunate, right? I don't know if everybody's gonna be as lucky as I am. I'm fortunate that I have a whole division, I have an intention, I have a mission, and then if I don't interfere with it, meaning don't need it too much, don't be emotionally attached to it, don't try to grab it and scratch it and, and, and hanker for it, just allow it to come to me instead of me going to it, it unfolds in the most miraculous way. And if it doesn't unfold in a miraculous way, that means it wasn't meant to be. There are a lot of things I've wanted that didn't happen, and in retrospect, I go, huh, Good thing that didn't happen, right? Good thing that didn't happen. I think Darius Rucker, right? He's, he's like the black country singer, right? I fell in love with country music down here in Florida. Black country singer, Darius Rucker. He's got a great song that says, thank God for all the things that I didn't get, right? Thank God for all the things that I did not get. He wanted to go to a particular college, but he didn't. But thank God because something else happened. He wanted to be with this girl, but thank God it didn't happen because he got with somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So there's so many different things in your life that you sometimes we think that we want that if God doesn't bring it, we just got to say, oh, because something better is on its way. And it's really what it is because our egos are, we're, we're tricked. We're very easily manipulated into thinking that we want things that we don't. But this whole idea of living in rural, rural land for me was like, a old dream and God didn't give it to me until I was ready. I had this dream when I was like 23. It wasn't until I was, I'm damn near 43, right? Half a year, half a lifetime later, 20 years later, it, God's like, okay, now you're ready for this, Elliot. And you know what? I'm happy that it turned out this way because 
had I been here earlier, I wouldn't have the momentum to maintain what I've now got, right? It was all, 2020 was my best year in business too. So I actually had the savings to put the down payment on the house for the first time. It was like, wow, really? Like I just, I now have the money. I now have the time. I now have the space. Now the opportunity opens up. So what do you do? You just jump. And there wasn't a, any sense of angst, anxiety, or neediness. And I, I just... I just hope that you guys can, can, can see that in your own life and practice that in your own life because way too many of us are anxious about things and get depressed when we don't get it. So that's it. You say that uh, your family and her family are not supportive. Well, that's a shame, man, and it is what it is. I've been ranting a lot about family today and the importance of family, but one of the things that's that's tried and true, one of the things that will that is is the truth, because it's in the Bible, is a man will take a woman and leave his mother and father. You now are the parent. Did you know that? Did you know that? I know feminists don't like to hear this, but when a man marries a woman, you in a way become her father. You become the parent. You, you're the top parent in the house. You are your wife's father. That's why in the marriage ceremony, the father gives away the son, uh, gives away the daughter to the son-in-law. The mother don't give away the son. I mean, maybe they do that now because they added that. But the whole, but the real ceremony was all about the father. Here I come with my daughter, and I'm passing her off to you. That basically means she was my responsibility. Now she's yours. And it's good for a woman to be under the mantle of a man, right? For all kinds of reasons that I won't get into right now. But you're now her authority. You're now her father figure in a way. It took me a long time to figure this one out to myself. I'm talking about it like it's something that everybody should know. But I didn't realize it until my wife's father died. When my wife's father died, I took on a whole, and this was, you know, that's basically the time I became red-pilled because I started to take on a whole different sense of responsibility for who I am and what I'm doing in this world. And I realized that, like, wait a second, it, her father dying reminded me that this man gave me responsibility over his daughter. And when he was alive, I didn't think that way because I was still a beta boy thinking like a little bitch. Uh, but then when he died and I, I, something just like clicked in me and I was like, wait a second. That's, she's my responsibility. I need, and so my sense of authority and responsibility like skyrocketed when her father died. You don't have to wait for her father to die to have that sense of authority over your wife and over your family and responsibility that comes with it. Right? The world doesn't like to hear this stuff because the world is anti-family. And anything that has made families work traditionally, they want to denigrate. But this is the right way and it's the best way. It's the best way. And so keep that in mind. And with that, you know you love her and you're only going to make the right decisions for her and so and for your family. And so you don't need them. It would be nice to have their blessing, but you don't need them. Right? It'd be good to move out of New York City. It'd be good to move out of all of the cities. It'd be good to move out of these blue counties. Um, you got to do what you got to do within the next, you say, next 12 to 18 months, man. I think that's all we have left. I really don't think we have much longer before things are really going to get super weird, right? As if they are not getting weird already, but they're only going to get weirder. And so try to do it as soon as you can, man. I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.